Figueroa's been here a time or two. Has made four appearances in the SEC Championship game alone with three titles. Will that experience lead him to another one and a fourth here in 2022? We're about to find out underway in the second game of our first round doubleheader in Pensacola, Florida. Mississippi State is in white. And Texas A&M is in black here in this first round matchup. Alex Perlman in carry taking you through the rest of the afternoon into early evening. So glad you could make us a part of your Sunday. We saw an absolute classic between Ole Miss and LSU. There were no goals to be gotten, but in the end, spectacular saves from the SEC goalkeeper of the year, Ashley Orcus, not only in regulation, but then in penalty kicks as well. Two saves, which spurred her team on with tired legs and everything and they will face South Carolina in the quarterfinals. Carolyn Calzada, terrific freshman wearing number 16 in black. Calzada assists versus Auburn and South Carolina, member of the SEC all-freshman team for Texas A&M. Pante, a Canadian international. Now two straight seasons that she has been All-SEC, member of the All-SEC freshman team last year. Bit of a tussle on the far sideline, Katie Smith in there as well as her counterpart number seven, Alexis Gutierrez. Smith, the captain, along with Carlina Sample for Texas A&M. Sample, the grad student from Frisco, Texas. You will see her in the middle of that lineup former All-American center back. And there she is on the ball now. Seems like the wind is starting to pick up as well as we get further and further towards evening here in Pensacola. But no rain, and that is the key. Even though we had plenty of it overnight into the early portions of the morning, it held off for the first matchup of the day, and it seems like it is doing the same here for Kenna Caldwell and Texas A&M, third year starter in goal for the Aggies. All but three games begun the last two years. The humidity's actually ticked up a percentage point as well. It was 88 to start things, and now creeping towards 90. Yeah, you're hoping that the, the weather doesn't change, change the game too much, especially that wind picking up. Both goalkeepers need to be careful of how high they play off their line, um, depending on what end of the field that they're in. Does that give either team an advantage if the wind keeps whipping? So, sometimes sometimes it's like when, when you play with the wind, yeah, you've got to strike from distance. You've got to see, can you catch that goalkeeper off the line? And you know, Both teams will be smart. Listen, they've got great coaching staff. They've got great goalkeeping coaches. They'll have talked to the goalkeepers knowing that, hey, this is a possibility with the weather, but this, this it should not come into play. It also seems like it's a bit of return to normalcy for Texas A&M, too, because they were held out of the SEC tournament last season. They also missed the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1994. A traditional powerhouse um, that struggled. We mentioned struggled. First, the first opening four games of the tournament and had lots of injuries, still have lots of injuries. Uh, a, young, a young team that are beginning to gel and coming together right now, and I think they need to stay in this tournament as long as they can. Look, if anybody knows what James Armstrong is going through with his injury woes so far this year, I mean, Ali Perry, Andrea Tyrell, those are both huge names. One on the goal scoring end, one on the defensive end. Tyrell was second team all SEC last year. You lose Miranda Carrasco and Elma Caslin as well. Their star goalkeeper, Maddie Anderson, has been out, started the first 13 games, then left their match against South Carolina in the second minute, sustaining the knock. She's been out ever since. Texas A&M had seven forwards alone that missed time last year because of injuries and COVID. It was an absolute nightmare, and I'm sure it's a bit of relief for the Aggies just to get to Pensacola this year. I think so, and Hayes, Hayes is somebody that's came up huge for them right now. You know, seven goals in the last six in the last six games, and you 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 want her now to step up and be that person that Aiden can wear. Here comes Maggie Wadsworth. 
Caldwell off her line to clear the danger. Just as far as Olivia Buxton, though, a freshman that James Armstrong says doesn't get nearly enough credit. But she is right in that mix with Maggie Wadsworth as a game changer, as a young player for State. Macy Hodge now just joining the second team in the All-SEC. Up ahead to Alexis Gutierrez. And we will have a goal kick. All right, in for Texas A&M. How do they find their way to the second round? I think they need to be clinical in possession. A&M want to build out the back. Let's see it. They, but Mississippi State aggressively pressed. You know, A&M don't want to turn the ball over in dangerous areas. That's going to cost them. And then they need to stay in this tournament for as long as possible. They've got to continue to grow. They like said they, they're scoring goals. They're beginning to find their form. But that goes out the window if they don't get this victory over, over Mississippi State. So the longer they stay in, they continue to grow. It's going to only help them when it goes into postseason to the NCAAs. McDonald, Hayes, Pante, Beckman, Calzada, Matula, and Leb are all upper underclassmen, that is. Sample just over the goal. And Mac Titus not challenged yet, but we are going to have to see Mackay McDonald actually with that firing just a little bit over the crossbar. That is one question mark for Mississippi State. Mac Titus, who has started in net for the injured Maddie Anderson, has given up seven goals in the last three matches, has started the last five, but didn't play last year, so had no experience, and she's being thrown into the fire against a great postseason team in Texas A&M. And difficult when you haven't played a lot at this level. You need to step up, your game needs to be huge, and you need to come off, like, for example, like you're dropping balls like that. Yes, she was going to go on the second ball, but Mississippi State are not willing to like, give away those opportunities and those chances. So stepping into this fire, into this cauldron, you, know, you need big performances from your goalkeeper, and hopefully she can bring that to this Mississippi State Bulldogs. First quarter of the match coming up, and it's going to be Pante to take it. We started for Canada at the Under-20 World Cup, an outside back, but they want to get her further up the pitch. G. Guerrero wants her as close to goal as possible. Puts in the in-swinger to the far post. And just over, once again, Titus tested. I think Mississippi State living dangerously right now. Again, you said you've got a goalkeeper that's being tested. She's dropped one and you got you just hit hit the frame. Hit the frame early doors and test her. See what she's made of. High pressure as well. Melissa Deloyce wearing the captain armband, the Texas Tech transfer who came in before her junior season. Number 10 in white, now a grad student, originally out of Dallas. When Deloyce transferred from Texas Tech, she had one day to visit Mississippi State because the recruiting dead period was just about to start. She basically went to Mississippi State sight unseen, making the drive from Dallas with her dad. And I'm sure she would say by the end of it that she absolutely made the right decision. And she loves being in Starkville. Great conversation with James Armstrong and even his re recruiting pitch and ev everything that goes with being part of Mississippi State. I'm not surprised with that. Flipped on now, here's Buxton. Has some space with her left foot. Right at Caldwell. Better offensively though for the Bulldogs. Yeah, great ball played in onto her left foot. But Cal Caldwell, as you said, had it covered. Dana Caldwell, former U.S. Women's National Team training camp participant. She has all the accolades, one of those goalkeepers in the SEC that are so highly decorated and we have our first in the book of the match. To be fair, a little bit early to be showing a yellow card. Very when, early, when I think, When we go right? and have, like, you know, there's, okay, it's a foul. It's a foul. But there's Riley no Combs. need to pull out. Yes. I don't think he needs to pull out the yellow card. Yeah, he wants to set the tone, but I'd be keeping that in my pocket right now and just having a, having a word, having a word and letting her get on with it. But a little bit early for me. Referee Aaron Hernandez deciding it's enough for the yellow card. Free kick in the box. Titus off her line and it floats high. Mississippi State is really living dangerously here. Yeah, you're looking at she she didn't know when to come. She was late coming. She got caught underneath it. Hit her. Oh, that, 
quite simply could have went into the back of the net. And again, that's that piece. Young a goalkeeper that hasn't played much. He's going to get tested today and need, you need to have your composure and everything around you, especially going into the college and Texas A&M. But again, off our line a little bit too late could have caused huge problems and put Mississippi State to go down early. And James Armstrong definitely playing with a shorthanded team. I mean, this is not the same one that started off SEC play with a win over Arkansas, Texas A&M, and LSU. It certainly set the tone. Those are all top 30 RPI teams. And Mississippi State looked like the class of the league. And I wonder if it wasn't for all those injuries. You see Tyrell right there. She's towards the right side with the crutches. I mean, she started all six games. And, and she's not an offensive force, but she anchors your defense. How would you deal with something like that, Ian? Oh, I did, and it was terrible. Uh, my very first and second year at, at Kentucky, I had that list that popped up on the screen there now, I had exactly the same with meniscuses, ACLs, et cetera, et cetera, and you're minus, you're minus five, six starters, it, and it's horrible. You end up with only, you, again, inherited one goalkeeper on, my, on, on a team, and you lose her, and you end up with a field player playing in goal. Like, it, it's, it, it's a difficult period to go through. And again, lo losing the goalkeeper, right? Losing the goalkeeper. Matty Anderson was a goalkeeper that like, throughout the season was pulling off huge saves. We'd mentioned her on numerous occasions on our halftime show. She was winning accolades, awards, and to lose her, that's huge. That's huge. And you see the young, younger goalkeeper, an experienced goalkeeper in goal, and his tendency to make mistakes. You don't want that to cost your season. It's going to be a drop ball here for Texas A&M. So for Mississippi State, knowing that, Ian, what are their keys? Mental focus. They displayed great discipline the last time out against A&M, and they're going to need to get a repeat of that to get to move on to the next round. And they've got to take their opportunities. They said they're, they're, they're scoring, averaging a goal a game, A&M, right? But they're, they're giving up a goal a game in the last five. So any opportunities that, that Mississippi State get, they've got to take them. It's going, to be, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult, as you said, missing players with all these injuries. Armstrong in his fourth season, previously the top assistant under Karen Hoppe at Auburn. Also his biggest rival, Ole Miss, Matt Mott, one of Karen Hoppe's best friends. They were both in each other's weddings. And he told me it was so hard to see Auburn miss the SEC tournament. All they had to do was beat Alabama, and they were in. But... That's no easy task. No one did it in the SEC this year. Did she stay outside? Yes. But Helly McWhorter's opportunity goes begging. Intercepted to the top corner right at Caldwell. That is much, much better. Mississippi State starting to get some turnovers in the offensive third and put it on goal with Riley Combs. Riley Combs receives a great ball. Drives that, drives out that back line and lets one rip. But I think anywhere else, you, you got, you got to make the goalkeeper make a save. Like that was clean hands, but it's straight down the middle. She's got to either put it to the left or right. Ask questions of the goalkeeper. That whistle is going to give it away in Mississippi State. As you can see, not cleared by Texas A&M. Give the ball away. Great step takes a touch pass and again right at the goalkeeper left or right ask the questions and again she tries to bend it when forcing just straight straight in a straight line hard to beat Caldwell over the top too at six feet tall very difficult very difficult and as I said she she, she knows she's very well positioned in our goal line to a, a clean set of hands KK Pavat sends a good ball in Alexis Gutierrez almost got her foot to it with a spectacular play instead now it's Hodge dancing on the sideline. 1v1 on McDonald. And that battle won by the Texas A&M midfielder. Looking at the set pieces, I want to see more of uh, uh, Gwen Mummer, right? Get her in the box, use her as your target, look for the scraps off her, or if she's got the opportunity, put her head in it and direct the ball towards goal. They don't seem to use her enough. Like a huge target when she comes up from center back. And so much experience as well. Number 18 in white for Mississippi State. Mummer, the grad student from Berlin. Started her career in Louisiana. 
And there she is, warding off the attack from Hayes. She's going to be vitally important when it comes to defending a player like Miley Hayes, who is in such a run of form right now with a team high nine goals. Three out of four weeks recently, she has been the SEC Offensive Player of the Week. Here's Beckman. Looking for Hayes. Combs wards her off. I like that. Really well defended by Combs. Let's the ball roll out then for a goal kick. Does really, really well. But some good interchanges, some good link and play by AM through the middle of the field. And as I said, they're a very possession based team and they combine really well. And as the games have gone on over the last number of weeks, have, have, have created opportunities and goals from combining through the midfield. They're also a deep and balanced team, and that has led Texas A&M to some wins this year because they don't just look towards Haley McWhorter or Maggie Wadsworth as Mississippi State has to do. They've had 15 different players find the back of the net this season, and that is the most on the SEC. And I'm talking to here from Aaron Hernandez, who is establishing himself early on. Already seen the yellow card. We've seen. A lot of comments to both teams, just trying to make sure that everything is kosher. Jojo Gongo, or Olivia Simpson, that is, for Texas A&M, as well as Mia Pante, getting some instruction. And I get it. I get it, right? You want to make sure it's a clean game, but sometimes you just need to let the game flow. There's no menace. There's no, this, there's, there's no tackles going in that Couldn't is agree dangerous. Me. Let the game go. Let it flow. and. Don't make it about you, make it about the players. Because that's, you know, they've worked so hard to get here. Let's see the game flow. You'd imagine it'll be a very different score line than what we saw earlier on. Maybe not in the terms of the team that wins, but just a one nil result going the way of Mississippi State the last time these two teams met. And it was on an own goal as well, so a little bit fluky. G. Guerreri certainly thinks he controlled the run of play in that match and deserved better, but it goes down in the book as a loss and a yeah, chance for redemption here in Pensacola. Gutierrez boarded out by Katie Smith. For a goal kick. I think the I think the momentum that Texas A&M has coming into this tournament is something that again Mississippi State are aware of. Talking about that one 0 win for State again early doors in the season, it's first conference game. It's it's difficult. That opener is a little bit difficult. Building with injuries, etc. Now you're banging in goals for fun, like you put four past four to before you get here, and now all of a sudden you've got a momentum, you've got a confidence, and that's what G will be looking for from his team. And he said the number of scores they've got within their roster right now, that's huge. With the injuries now at Mississippi State, you're not scoring goals. So that swing at uh, fingers crossed, it's not a one-nil uh, not a one-nil game, but we see more goals and we see some excitement. Defensively very stingy as well. They've given up multiple goals in a match just three times, including to LSU, but they actually won that game. Simpson held off another goal kick for Kenneth Caldwell. What's most impressive to me about Mississippi State is the team has every reason to hang their heads, to worry about who's not on the pitch as opposed to who is. But James Armstrong says it's just unbelievable that this team continues to put up the effort and the intensity every single game, even though they're dealing with so many issues. I think it comes from the coaching staff. It comes from the belief the coaching staff have in the players, and then that belief is infectious. Then the players are like, hey, let's do it for each other. And speaking to the guys, like, I speak to James Armstrong. Being, I've been around their staff, and each one of them bring something different to this unit. And having that staff and that belief, that's why they're here today. They, they, they've got a staff that want to build them up and build them up and build them up. They believe, and they believe. Carissa Beckman is the one that is down right now looking for a potential head injury after she went up the collision towards midfield. The physios gather around her and assess the situation. And with 
A&M's injury issues as well with Taylor Pounds, Laney Carroll, Lauren Getzik, Ali Russell all out for the year. They can't really afford to lose too many more. Colliding with Macy Hodge. As you see, there's nothing in it. Both of them are going for the ball. It's just unfortunate she comes off the worst of wear. But it, it, this has just given Mississippi State the opportunity to get a talk over at the side of the field, to regroup, get some instruction, hey, get uh, quiet words from the coaching staff in regards to, hey, hey, calm down. We've got this. Just go about your business and be disciplined in the way that you have been throughout the season. Probably a great break and play just, just for that alone. Not an opportunity that you get very often being on the sidelines. I can imagine, Ian, sometimes that's a bit of a helpless feeling. Yeah, you've got no timeouts. You're not, you're not like basketball. And trying to get that instruction onto the field is sometimes difficult. We mentioned stadiums in, in the country, the SEC and Ellis Field where a and play. Difficult to get that instruction on the field. So this little break and play, that's exactly what James Armstrong wanted right now. Sidney Becerra is the one that replaces Carissa Beckman. Becerra, extremely decorated freshman out of Flower Mound, Texas. She was the 2021 Texas Gatorade Player of the Year, wearing number four in black. There's Calzada using her 5'11 frame. Simple. A bit of a mess there with that pass back, but no problem because Buxton didn't chase. So the top part of the bracket has been finalized. We're waiting on one more team to get to the quarterfinals to advance to play Alabama, but on PKs, Ole Miss advances past Sean Hudson's LSU Tigers, and they will face South Carolina in what becomes a two versus 10 matchup. Pente. Hodge finds it. Captain cuts it back and finds Combs. Here's Wadsworth. Candidate for SEC all freshman team. Simpson. Just possessed. There's Becerra. Buxton. Has some help to her left. Played near the corner flag and out of bounds. Well, after the win for Ole Miss, a testy one at that against LSU. I asked him about the performance of his SEC goalkeeper of the year, Ashley Orcus. Get to that in just a moment here after the Mississippi State attack. And Kenneth Caldwell snares it. So Matt, you outlast LSU, PK's Ashley Morcus just came up so huge for you. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's always nerve wracking to go to PK's, but I really like the fight in our team, really the whole, you know, 110 minutes and, and um, you know, weren't really clean enough probably in front of goal, but then you get the penalties, you have Ashley, you got a chance for sure, and um, she was just awesome. How do you regroup now after playing 110 minutes, going through the wear and tear of PK's, uh, you're missing Ramsey for yeah. Tuesday against a very good South Carolina team. Yeah, South Carolina's great. The 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 um, you know we we missed them during the season, so we didn't didn't play against them. So that you know makes it, our jobs a little harder to make sure we have them uh, figured out as much as we can. But they're a really good team and really good defensively. Yeah, not having Ramsey will be difficult. Um, you know, but we got to get refreshed and regenerated and um, you know excited about a, a quarterfinal match. Thank you, Matt. Much appreciated. You got it, guys. So if you're just joining us, the reason that Ramsey Davis, who I was alluding to, is not going to be on the pitch for Ole Miss because she picked up a red card, but not the only one. For LSU, it was even worse. Maya Gordon and Ramey Noel both did as well, fighting a two-game mandatory suspension. So even if Ole Miss gets past the quarterfinals into the semis, they will be without Ramsey Davis. 
Miley Hayes dancing outside the box. A little bit too far upstairs. Yeah, I think, I th honestly, going back to Matt Martin, going back to this, you know, they play South Carolina, that's something that had to happen for that program. They had to win today. Their, that bracket is absolutely huge for them because that win now gives them more of an opportunity to get called out on Monday in the selection show for the NCAAs. A win against South Carolina is, is just massive for them based upon RPI. So, again, they had to get past LSU today to go and force that game against against South Carolina. If they beat South Carolina, that could very well get them into the NCAA tournament alone, and they might not even have to think too much about selection. Right, it, take, it takes that pressure off. It takes that pressure off. As you said, he, he, he won't mention it himself. You know, he, 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 again, he wants to keep his, keep his team's feet on the ground. But he's thinking it. He's thinking it for sure. And he mentioned, well, we haven't played them so far this year. We got away with that one. But he knows they're a good well, side. Well, he's on the committee. He knows right. what his team needs to exactly, do. Exactly, exactly. So it, it, it's good. Uh, uh, There's another game to look at. No, no game is not exciting in this tournament. Like, so that game, Ole Miss, South Carolina, massive. Hot switches field. Trying to play up the sideline, looking for Jojo Gongo. Grad student from Winnipeg. Out of bounds. I'm liking it a little bit better now with Mississippi State. They seem to have settled down. They seem to have put a foot on the ball, start knocking it around, get themselves into dangerous areas, and they're setting themselves up for some set pieces. That's where they need to be clinical. Get on that set pieces, feed the box, and he said, you got, you, got, you got a fantastic goalkeeper in Kenneth Caldwell. You have to continue to test her. you got to get wear and tear, and eventually, hopefully, for them, the ball will win the back of the net. Well, Mississippi State does have 112 corners coming into this SEC tournament. That is part of their MO. Set pieces have been great for James Armstrong over the years. Going to stay with Mississippi State here. Yeah, and as you said, here's a set piece. Here's an opportunity to go serve the box. So as you can see, you can see Grandmama growing up. She sh hopefully should be the target if the serve a good ball. She could cut around the back post. And you got to look for the scraps. You got to look for the scraps off her. You find something. Put the ball in the back of the net, and then lift, lift your team. To Lewis. Sends it right to Caldwell. That's been a disappointing piece over the last two, like this this game and the game before. You're serving the ball into a box and you've got a quality goalkeeper. And as a coach, I'm so disappointed if I'm just serving it into the goalkeeper's hands. An opportunity to put, you know, put the ball in the back of the net and that's what you're giving me. You know, you've got to either change the person who's taking the set pieces, do something different. Becerra, vital block by Combs. Comes out to Kate Colvin, who's been playing on a new level this year with four goals and assists last season. She's got four goals and a team high eight helpers this year. Another free kick now for Mississippi State. Here's Pavat, the two time Arkansas Gatorade play of the year. Feeding the big ball over the top. A bit of a disconnect right there. And that ball had to be cleared off of the line. Between the two center backs, not usual. You see Smith and Sample, and also two of the captains on this team. Breakdown Lack communica of communication. Yeah, total breakdown in communication. And that leads for an opportunity for Mississippi State. As you see, am I going to win it? Are you going to win it? No, is it my ball, your ball? We just look at it and it allows Mississippi State to get on the front foot and get an opportunity. Like it, it's a last dash tackle that gets the ball out for the throw in. And it comes from Pavan. Head back towards the top of the box. Buxton thought about one timer herself. Instead pushed out to Pavat once again. Hodge serves it to the back post. Headed on a couple of times. And just wide of a tip save by Caldwell. Now you're asking questions. You're asking questions of the goalkeeper. And she comes up huge for AM. A great ball back in. Ball's played out, knocked around. 
It's a great serve into the box. Again, when you when you see this ball play back into the box, where's the who's picking up who? Where's the there's a breakdown of communication there now? You're just ball watching. And a fantastic save to our, to our right hand side. Watch this again. Fingertips pushes it around the post. Both players by Mississippi State completely unmarked in the box. Fine G, I'm asking questions on my defenders. Hallie McWhorter with a short one right into the feet of Sample. She clears the line to McDonald. To Madison Cotta. 79 minutes for her last game, only at 88 the entire season coming into the match. She has been one of those players that has been pressed into duty. Talk about asking questions. That's what James Armstrong has done. He's asked plenty of questions of Madison Cotta, and, and she's had the right answers this season. And injuries are giving her that opportunity. Who's next to step up? Who's next to go up beyond the field? Who's next to, you know, put the ball in the back and then win that tackle? That's what you do when you're recruiting. You're recruiting players that you know can step on the field and give you that energy, give you that opportunity to keep you and put you in a position to go win games. And James has said he has full confidence in who he's bringing off the bench now and playing massive minutes because of all those injuries. That's why you've got a deep bench. Do the recruiting well, and they have. They've done so well at Mississippi State. Uh, and building that program to where it is today. It's like the confidence piece, you have to have the confidence in your players. And we've seen it. Colvin. One thing to keep in mind when Texas A&M does not concede at the SEC tournament. They are absolutely lethal. 14-0 when they allow a goal or less. McDonald taken right away by Hodge. Talk about an unsung hero. Macy Hodge certainly fills that requirement. Every team needs them. Crisis defending and does really well. Doesn't panic, wins the ball, gets the clear. So Mississippi State and Texas A&M both fighting for the right to take on the SEC champions. No team in SEC play has knocked off Alabama. They finished off the first perfect season in the SEC since South Carolina did it in 2016. One blemish on the entire year was to Miami very early on. Since then, nobody has found a way through Wes Hart's Crimson Tide. They feel like a juggernaut. I mean, you just watch them play. They never feel like they're the underdog. They always know the X is going to be on their back, and we can't wait to see them on Tuesday in the quarterfinals. That, that is, it's that confidence. They, they can do nothing wrong. In their minds, they can do nothing wrong. And when you've got a team like that, oh, do not be in their way. Do not be in their way. So, yeah, Tuesday, there, there they are in the crowd, scouting out the opposition, right? Tuesday is going to be a huge game. So, so looking forward to watching this Alabama side life. 6 Eastern time right here on SEC Network on Tuesday. And they deserve a few days to be here at the beach and have a good time. And, I mean, talk about a reward for a great season. They deserve that. If anyone deserves it, it's them. As you said, that one blemish on the copybook is that Miami uh, away loss. Difficult, difficult place to go. That Miami team's getting better, but I, I tell you what, I do believe that that loss is why Alabama are not number one in the nation. Correct. That one loss on their record but against that against that team is why UCLA are sitting just above them in the number one spot. I'll do you one better. If they played Miami right now, it would not be the same result. Not even close. I can tell you Miami would not play them right now because of the fear <laughs> of how many, how many goals that they would concede. Hey, over, hey, over. No foul, no foul. Let him out. In, in. Inadvertent handball there on Gongo. Colvin tracks back. And just a throw in now for Mississippi State. If I'm James Armstrong, I'm loving the pressure that my team is putting on. on Texas A&M right now, and pinning them back. If, if you're the one seed, you have every advantage you possibly could. 14 times the one seed has gone on to win. I mean, look, 21 
combined times. If you're the one or the two seed, getting that first round by, also playing the lowest teams re remaining, it makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, the rest period, the rest period alone that you get before the games, and you can go and enjoy, you can enjoy it a little bit more, and take in the atmosphere of a couple of games is what you see with the Alabama team here today, and it's just different, it's different. I would love to have my team to ever be the number one seed <laughs> when we were coming in here to the beach and, you know, go back to 2014, we lost in the final to this Texas A&M uh, program, won nothing, and it was heartbreaking. You know, you go all the way to a final and you work your tails off, but, but that was, you know, a good year. We end up going to the Sweet 16, and, but A&M, traditionally a powerhouse program, deserved to win it that year, and no doubt in their mind, G wants to get to that final again. It feels like, though, this year, maybe more than any other, you do not want to be in the lower part of the bracket with Alabama. An 8-9 or the 4-5, like Arkansas and Vanderbilt are. Go back to Miami would never play them again. Nobody wants to play Alabama right now. Like, the, the, the closest I saw them run was the other night, Auburn. And leaving it so late, Riley Tanner comes up huge. But... I love what Wes Hart is doing. I love what the Alabama program are doing. Look, I would argue that they're even better off after the Auburn win because they got that late winner in a rivalry game. It just ended up giving them more and more confidence after not scoring for so long. They probably would have, they could have floated down to Pensacola, <laughs> I can imagine, with, with the confidence that that group have right now. As I said, cannot wait to see them. Now that's, Seeing them live, again, I've watched a lot of them over the season. Well, they kind of did. They took a play. So. Right, 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 oh, right. There you go, right? But I've, I've watched a lot of them over the season. But again, it's on TV. But having the opportunity to watch them live, I, I cannot wait. Here's McWhorter, seven goals, four assists on the year. Gains the advantage, but right into Caldwell's hands. Trying to continue to ask the questions of Kenna Caldwell. She's been busy in there. She has, and Mississippi State have had the best of the opportunities, even though all the, you know, the possession that Texas A&M have had, Mississippi State are creating the better chances and the better, the better looks at goal. Five saves early on for Caldwell. Just one so far in goal for Mac Titus. I mean, remember, Texas A&M was the one that was all over Mac Titus's goal. And, and honestly, are a little bit unlucky that they don't have the advantage in this match. But ever since, it has totally changed. Yeah, I think, I, I think the head knock. Mississippi State were able to regroup. James Armstrong and his staff were able to have words. And they went, they've came back out onto the field and they've been a different side. Is any of that tactical, or it's just kind of the way that the match has gone so far? I think, you, you know, it's going to play in the mind. We were very disciplined that, uh, in, in Ellis Field, and we just came away with a one nothing win on an own goal. Uh, A&M have grown and grown and grown, and now all of a sudden we're playing them again. How are we going to repeat that performance? So there's probably a little bit of nerves, first time on this field. Um, so they had to get through it. And I think now the conversation it looks like, hey, those nerves are gone 10 minutes into the game with that quiet talk, and they move forward. And now we'll have a quick stoppage there. Juliet Moore was on the challenge with Colvin. Colvin looks a little shaken up for a moment. Again, nothing in it. Nothing in it. Both of them going for the ball. No malice. To be fair, it should be just a drop ball. But just back of the head to the mouth there, Colvin. Usually more of a central midfielder. It's been moved out yeah. wide by G. Guerrero. Like right now, I, I, if I, if right now I'm James Armstrong. I'm like, I, I'm kicking the ball back all the way back to Kenneth Caldwell. Just drop the ball, knock it back. We, we regroup and we start all over again. Into the box instead for Texas A&M. Another quick whistle. Yeah, that, that, that was strange. I, I'm a little bit, I'm challenging that. I'm challenging that. If I'm a coach, I want my player to go challenge that one. 
or I'll give it back. I'll give it back to the goalkeeper and let us rebuild. We are 150 minutes into the 2022 SEC Soccer Tournament, and we have not seen a goal in the run of play yet. I hear you, but I'm going to counter that and say we've had phenomenal performances so far from some unbelievable goalkeepers. We have. The, the, saves, the saves that Orcas uh, and Swift made in the first game, the saves that Caldwell has pulled off here in this game, it's, it's, yeah, we all want to see goals, but these young, these young women in, in, in goal for all these programs within the SEC are a, a, a level above the rest, I yeah, believe. Yeah. So, yes, we want to see the goals, but she's pulled off an unbelievable save to her right-hand side, like barely fingertips around the post. Yeah, that's true. Also, I misspoke. I, I went a little bit too soon. It's uh, 135 minutes. Still a long time. Yeah. Into the box. Hodge. I like that. Very well defended by Mississippi State. Win the first ball, win the second ball, turn it over, but don't allow a, a dangerous shot on goal. You know, that ball just made its way back to the goalkeeper for a routine save. Eight and a half minutes to go before the break. Still waiting for the breakthrough. And this looks very similar to what we saw earlier on between these two teams at the beginning of the SEC season. Only difference in own goal. In the back of the net off of, Miss, of uh, Texas A&M and Mississippi State did get a tough win. Part of that strong run to begin the season. They won three straight in SEC play. And that really got them going, got their confidence up, including 2-0 over Arkansas in the SEC opener. That doesn't happen very often. Another an giving chase, and that one finds the back of the net. It was never pretty, but Gwen Mummer gives Mississippi State the lead. The first opportunity that the ball got served into her, she put the ball in the back of the net. That's exactly what Mississippi State needed. That's exactly what Mississippi State wanted. You said there's seven odd minutes are left on the clock. The Texas A&M, what are you going to do? You got to regroup. You got to pull yourselves. But this, uh, it was coming. It was coming. As you said, the pressure that Mississippi State were putting Texas A&M under, they the better of the chances. They can serve the box, hit Gwen Mummert. She puts the ball in the back of the net. Mummert's second goal of this season. And for the former Louisiana transfer, she has reached double digits in her career. In her 87th start in Division One, And now it's Texas A&M's time to regroup. You can see the, you can see the side of the field. G is having, having words with the referees, probably looking for a, a, a foul on, on his goalkeeper. And to be fair, I, I don't think so. You, 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 as a coach, you're going to want that, right? You're going to want to be like, hey, I want to protect my goalkeeper. But I see nothing there. The replay showed that we see nothing there. And, you know, Gwen, Gwen put her body on the line. She's... She put the ball in the back of the net, and all of a sudden it's 1 0 Mississippi State. The same score line as their first meeting. Do we have more goals in, score, in store for us here at the end of this first half and into the second 45? And again, it hasn't stopped. The referee's gone over. He's issued a card now to G. He's continuously getting on to that fourth official, getting on to the referee. Clearly frustrated. And I get that. I get that. But again, we've got the benefit of that. We can see it back from his angle. Again, they sit the opposite end of their bench, right? So they're even further away from, from everything that, that, that's just happened. I get it. Some coaches like to get the yellow card so they can sort of rile up their, their own players to get, it, to, to, get, to get something out of them. You know, hey, so how are we going to answer this? And they've got this opportunity in a set piece. Here's Colvin. They could answer right here. And Titus grabs it. How do you rally the troops now? Yeah, I mean, you have to just tell them to continue being who they are. Like, they're on a momentum. 
they're scoring goals, so they know they can put the ball into the back of the net. It's a matter of, we spoke about it, can you break the press, right? Mississippi State are going to be aggressive, they're going to come after you, so can you be clinical in your possession? Can you move them around? Can you find the space out wide? Can you go and get into the 18-yard box and get an opportunity on goal and really test this Mississippi State goalkeeper? Pente plays it forward, looking for McDonald. Titus out of her box. Moore floats it. He's looking for Hannah Johnson, the sophomore who's back in her home state, originally from Middleburg, Florida. Her family looks for shark teeth as a hobby. That's an interesting hobby, don't you think? You know what? My son, Aiden, would love that because he's absolutely obsessed with sharks. Really? <laughs> oh, absolutely. You name it. Books, pajamas. You need to move to the Florida coast, I right, suppose. Right, right, right. Tell me Get about it. Get out of Charlotte. Jai Smith, 1v1, slots it past Titus, and she just got a save on it, just the foot. And that was it, or Jai Smith would have equalized this game. To be fair, came out big there. Came out big, closed down the angle, got, the, got a foot save on it. The rebound, you give, gifted opportunity. The rebound, you got to put it in the back of the net, and you sky it over the crossbar. Like, what a huge opportunity for Texas A&M. G's going to be raging with that one. But you can see, great foot save, but you've got an open goal. The goalkeeper's down. You've got to take those chances. McDonald just couldn't get that half volley on net. Love a free kick coming up here from a dangerous spot. It's interesting, it's interesting Alex, right? So the goalkeeper is struggling a little bit, struggling with our goal kicks. It's something, what's, what does James Armstrong do? Well, you gotta bring back a defender, right? You gotta have somebody, if you're gonna go long, you've gotta beat that first line. And this is another opportunity that you've given to Texas A&M based upon him, and not a great goal kick from your goalkeeper. Go. JJ, right, 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 right. Colvin will right. take it once again. Go. I would imagine G. Guerreri thinks there are goals to be had for the Aggies. Colvin tests her just over the bar. Yeah, they are giving back Titus all that they can handle. So far, she's come up to the challenge, but can they keep battering her goal for another 45 minutes and find one? Yeah, it's the discipline piece. And again, she had that one covered. She's in a great spot on our goal line. But Mississippi State needs to be disciplined now. See, a and will throw everything at them for the last four odd minutes to try and get something, bring it in 1-1 at halftime. Huge result for State going in 1-0 one, one up. But again, I go back. State have had the better of the opportunities, the better of the chances. And I'm not sure it can be said enough with the types of injuries that they have sustained to see them on the front foot game in and game out and just taking it to these SEC opponents. I mean, the last time that they saw the pitch was against the number six seed Georgia in Kadani McAlpine's first year and played them to a 1-1 still, mate. This team are playing with no fear. Um, and I, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but they're playing against teams and they've got no respect, as in regards to the, who they are, are they powerhouse, etc., etc. They're getting after teams because they know they we are good enough to do this now. This is where our program is at. It might have been a different story last season, but this one, it is not. Calzada, Pete. Cuts it back, and dancing around Molly McDougal. Jai Smith. Step away. Step shoulders. Calzada, 1v1 on up, McDougal up, once again. Up, up. Step up. Nothing they could do but play it back to Sample. Sample trying to find the middle this time. She does with Becerra. Pante. Makes her defender fall back to the middle. Away by Hodge for a moment. And Jai Smith couldn't connect. Pante is showing some great, some great work at White. Great service into the box. Quality defending. They said they are living that dream right now. Mississippi State being one nothing up. But they're defending for their lives. It's great to see. More. to a streaking Maggie Wadsworth. And now here's Johnson. Back to the middle, Buxton. 
Sent away at the very last by Texas A&M and Anderson Williams. And now the referee stops play. Mississippi State player is down. Again, and that's Buxton. Right, this is, this is, they don't want this. I think she fell awkward. You get to see the replay of it. She, uh, as she was going through and the ball was taken off her foot, she falls awkward. And you're not going to stay that down that long holding your leg if it's not, you can see here, gets through, planted foot, awkward little twist. James Armstrong is going to be hoping that there's nothing serious here. Buxton, who Armstrong has said doesn't get the same plaudits as a player like Maggie Wadsworth, but is a freshman that has made that same type of impact. And James has to be thinking, not again. Yeah. She, to me, right now, she's had more of an impact on the game so far than Maggie Wadsworth. And he's not wanting to lose her right now. Like, she has, she has gotten in behind, she's driven up players, she's created opportunities. Again, playing with no fear. And this, he 100% does not want to see this right now. And just a minute and 52 seconds before the break at that, after Mississippi State went up on the Gwen Mummer goal in the 38th minute. The fans who have packed the facility here at Pensacola, great stadium, great crowd. Those Bulldogs fans have to be holding their breath, just hoping that it's not the worst case scenario here for the Bulldogs and Olivia Buxton. This is not look good right now. Barely putting any weight on that right foot. Yeah, did not look good. On her left. Yeah, really being supported on her way off the field, so we'll have to keep our eye on that, give you any updates as we get them, but Olivia Buxton will not be able to continue, at least in the near future, and now, once again, Mississippi State loses a key piece. James Armstrong just continues to go down and further, further into his roster. There you can see it. Knees, braces, crutches. It looks like a, an ER across over there on the Mississippi yeah. State bench. But again, we said it, said it in the first game, but somebody else has got an opportunity right now. Somebody else has got to step up. This Mississippi State team are putting a lot of pressure on AM and the one nail up for a reason. Somebody else gets the opportunity to come that way. And they're already missing a Andrea Tyrell, who is on the left side, was a member of the All-SEC second team last year. And you see those, those are marquee names, and Olivia Buxton fills that category as well. I mean, if, if you're James Armstrong here, do you need to say anything to your team? Do you need to be like, hey, let's keep our heads up. I know it happened again, but we're winning this match. And if we m move on, we get a chance at Alabama again. You know, like everything is still there right there for them. They've gone through a lot of adversity this season that this injury now, I don't think in, them, in their minds, we're going, oh, here we go again. I think it's like, hey, okay, move on next person up and let's get after it uh, horrible horrible to lose one of your key players right and we will we'll talk about that and etc etc but i think <laughs> i don't know i hate saying it they might be used to it they might be used to it and, and they've got that culture within the program that regardless of who's on the field they're going to work their tails off and so just 19 seconds left here in half number one, which was going to be a potential cause of celebration after 45 minutes. But now it ends up being maybe the exact opposite. Yes, the score line is in Mississippi State's favor, but they just lost potentially one of their key players and freshmen. Gwen Mummert's goal is the difference. And I, that, that's interesting, like, why? But she looks just as flummoxed right, as you, Ian. Right, right, Why, Why Why the need to go and speak to a player? Again, if I'm James Armstrong, I'm asking that question. Why are you speaking to my center back? Well, we are back underway, and the goal scorer at that. 
as Madison Cotta starts this second half in the back. So Cotta may be the difference coming in for Olivia Buxton. Alex Perlman in carry with you for the second of two games in this doubleheader, the first round at the SEC Soccer Tournament. We know seven of the eight teams that will be playing on Tuesday, just one more to be decided out here on the pitch this early evening in Pensacola, Florida. First year here after being in Orange Beach for so long. It was a little bit strange to some of the longtime head coaches, including G. Guerreri, but everybody has settled in very nicely here on this first day. As long as they're going to the beach, that's where they want to be. Mummer warding off McDonald's. Oh, huge save. Mac Titus. And it's not over yet. Not even close. Matula dispossessed. Matula crosses in. Oh, Titus again. Wow. Wonderful save. Up to the challenge oh. both times. Like you're talking about your goalkeeper, and we spoke about her in the first half. Like, yo, oh, nervous, the jitters. Oh, whatever was said at halftime, she's came out big. This first save stays big, spreads herself well, makes the save. Second one in is even better. Raw, oh, the reaction. Her right hand pushes it by the post. That's a great start for AM, but a fantastic double saves from from our goalkeeper Mac Titus. And that would only give her more and more confidence. Because remember, I mean, Titus is a sophomore that didn't see the field last year because Maddie Anderson has been so dominant. But with her injured, it is Mac Titus's job. And that's who Mississippi State has to roll with. Maddie Anderson is going to be on the side of the field, and she's going to be so happy for Titus right now. That goalkeeping unit will be so tight. And seeing her make those big, big saves that keeps her team in. Oh, she's going to be grinning from ear to ear. Now up to five saves. Caldwell has had to make six in net for Texas A&M. Titus, who has started the last five games. Because Maddie Anderson was injured against South Carolina. This is going the other way. A&M has started off the way to start the first half. Getting after Mississippi State. Let's see what they're questioning the goalkeeper. She's pulled off the two saves. Right. And, you know, that break in play when... When James Armstrong brought his team together and they, you know they settled, then all of a sudden they started knocking the ball around. They need that moment again. They need something. Like, you're, you're looking for somebody to put the foot in the ball and start controlling it, and just relax because you know that A&M team is going to come after you. They have that confidence, right? They're scoring goals. You've got him one nothing up at half time. Let's see, just somebody please put the foot in the ball and let's just play. Delois. Matula has been lively early on. Overlap comes from her instead it's Hayes. Back it goes to Matula. Combination play much better for Texas A&M at the beginning of this second half. I'm sure G. Guerreri is going to be a bit inspired by the way they've come out of the locker room. But can they sustain it? Just like you said, this is how the first half began and the momentum went all towards Mississippi State, eventually leading to the Mummert goal. Can they do this for a whole 45 minutes is the big question. Gutierrez has a lot of space in front of her, now closed down for a moment by Anderson Williams. Instead, it's McWhirter. Couldn't pick out the pass, McDonald. Smith, defense on Wadsworth, too far in front of Pante, Sample does track it down, just a throw in now, not a corner coming up for Mississippi State. Wadsworth getting on the ball and cutting inside. You want to see more. You want to see more of that. And that's what James Armstrong is going to want to see. Like she, she was, she had a quiet first 45 minutes. Again, freshman. 
you're asking everything of her. Like she's, she deserves maybe you know some quiet time per se. But you're looking for him to go, to go and produce something. And seeing her cutting in there, being a little bit more creative in front of the, in front of the 18 yard box. That's exactly what he's going to want. Pante, just as far as Deloise, and no one home. You would argue Texas A&M certainly coming into this game in better form, unbeaten in their last seven matches. With wins over Rice, Ole Miss, Auburn, and Florida, draws to LSU, South Carolina, and Missouri with a plus seven goal differential in that stretch. But it's Mississippi State with the advantage, despite being shorthanded, despite missing so many key pieces. But to be fair, Texas A&M is as well. Both teams kind of banged up here towards the end of the regular season now into the postseason. Gutierrez. Hodge out of danger. Here's McWhorter. On Smith, one of the captains. He closes down the space. Oh, you see why G. Guerrero calls her such a uh, an outstanding 1v1 defender. When, when, you, when we spoke about Titus, the big saves that she's made, there's the first one in the first half. She gets down, great save with her foot. Second half, stays big, another save with her leg. But this, to me, was the save of the game so far. Her right hand, putting it around the post. Huge, huge saves that keeps Mississippi State at one nothing. Ian, when you were with Kentucky, when you're the head coach there, how did you make sure that if something like that happened where your number one keeper went down, that you were giving enough run maybe during training to your number two keeper that they could perform like Titus is in such a pressure situation here in the postseason. You got to put them into uncomfortable positions. I was very lucky. I had a young lady called Jordan Rhodes who is phenomenal um, in front of goal and phenomenal at practice. So you were putting her in against that your number two, etc. If it ever came up, uh, and having good players like that in practice to test your goalkeeper, like the better forwards in the, in, in the SEC. That's, that's the only way you can sort of replicate it. But there's nothing like putting them really into a game-like situation. And in the SEC tournament at that. Exactly. Yes, exactly. she's had five games to get her feet wet, but still, this is different. Back post. McWhorter clears the lines. Smith can build. Mississippi State just fierce, full of confidence, and very feisty. So here's, here's my fear. How long can both teams keep up this intensity? Knowing that their both teams are riddled with injuries, they don't have that deep of a bench, and if you are making substitutions, what level does the level drop? Like, are you going to give the opponents that opportunity to put the ball in the back and or create an opportunity based upon the substitutions you've had to make because of the intensity of the game so far? Whose bench is deep? And deeper with quality. That's, I guess, what we're about to find out. You might say, Edge, Texas A&M in, in that case, but we have seen a lot of players coming off the bench so far for Mississippi State. Giguri has only used three subs. I'm not sure he would go much deeper, but those are three quality players in Jai Smith, Anderson Williams, and City Becerra. Spoils for choice there. Very much so. Just wide of Mac Titus's goal once again for Texas A&M as Pante gave it a go. And you, you see James Armstrong is, is, is off the bench giving instructions. He won't be happy with the, with, with the way that he's let her cut in onto her left foot and get the opportunity to, to get a shot off. Um, and again, like from the angle that we say it here, yeah, we think the goalkeeper had it covered, but defensively you cannot give away those opportunities. 
And then if you're just joining us after an apparent knee injury, Olivia Buxton has not returned to this game. That was back towards the end of the first half. And so just a, another quality player, albeit a freshman, but someone that they have a ton of confidence in, went down with another injury that uh, unfortunately James Armstrong is getting all too used to watching players walk off the pitch. Free kick coming from Mississippi State. Combs, who has injured herself against Alabama, but returned against Vanderbilt the very next game. There's crisis averted for Mississippi State in that situation. Bummer has it tracked all the way back. Titus does look pretty poised, even with Micaiah McDonald making the run at it. Then on the beach in Pensacola, on the lower side of things, with Alabama being the top seed in this bracket and the tournament overall, that's what they're playing for. Mississippi State at Texas A&M with a chance to face a team that did not lose in the SEC all season. 10-0 for West Hart's Crimson Tide. First team to complete a perfect SEC campaign since 2016 when South Carolina did it. And they are the number two seed here in Pensacola. Smith as numbers move forward for Texas A&M. To her center back pair. Sample. Here's Beckman. Just keep it there, keep it there. No service, KK. Keep it away. Up, 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 up. You can hear the game within the game, right down there on the field. I, I, all I can hear is Titus and her communication to her back four to her midfield is spot on. She's telling them when to step, when not to step, um, you know, when they, when they win possession, where the next pass needs to go. Because James Armstrong said it just, just, just on half time, like, yeah, there's a time when we need to go long, but there's also a time that we need to keep the ball. And when they've gone long right now, they're asking, they're asking a lot of Maggie Wadsworth. She's, she, as, as, soon as, as soon as they get the ball, Maggie Wadsworth's got two players on straight off the bat. So they have to change that piece. They have to go and find another way to keep possession. Macy Hodge called for the foul there. Starter since her second game last year, now a junior. Originally started her career at Western Georgia. It's about 40 minutes from her home in Douglasville, Georgia. Didn't play though and actually took a job as a cashier at Kroger because she wasn't sure if she wanted to play soccer anymore, but got back into it. Mississippi State took the chance on her. And it's been a match made in heaven. One of the captains on this team. And now she's playing in one of the most prestigious conference tournament finals in the nation. Great story. Finished player on the pitch, according to James Armstrong, too. Third quarter coming up now for Texas A&M. Can they ask more questions of Titus? Hey, come on, keep pushing, keep pushing. Here's Pante, the Canadian international. Oh, oh, good delivery. Titus with a crowd of players around her. Her confidence, needs, it's going through the roof right now. He's had a shaky start in the beginning, you know, came out to a ball, didn't make it. And now all of a sudden, she's grown and grown and grown into this game. He said she's played five games in the SEC. Now all of a sudden, she's in the tournament, she's playing against AM. And look how confident she is taking that ball under pressure. That's great goalkeeper. Kata. You know, Titus, it almost feels like like a baseball ace. You don't get to them in the first inning, you don't get to them at all. And that is exactly what's happened with Titus. We saw that shaky confidence, but look at her come off her line. She's she's reading the game perfectly, hasn't made a mistake yet. She's grown up within the game. Um, and again, this is what James Armstrong is going to want. Go back to 
his original goalkeeper, Maddie Anderson, that she'll be working with Titus every single day. And she, as I said, she'll have a smile on her face right now, knowing that the, the person who has stepped in to fill her shoes is putting in a performance like she is right now. I see you beaming because I love it. You absolutely, as a former keeper yourself and a goalkeeper coach now at an academy, you know what it's like to play that position, and you know how difficult it is if you're not making the right decisions, and you're at all tentative, and Titus is not. No, I, and you go back to, again, I hate mentioning the, the, the nervousness, the mistakes in the first couple of minutes. She had the mind of a goldfish, exactly everything that we ask for. Forget about it, move on, you've got to make the next save, and that's what she's done. Honestly, she's grown into this game, and her team, the, it's infectious. The confidence will flow throughout the team, so yeah. She's pulled, she's came off big for Mississippi State. They really both have. The only blemish on Kenneth Caldwell's resume in this match is just the, that ball that Gwen Mummer took out of her hands that G. Guerreri was talking to referee Aaron Hernandez about, thought maybe she had possessed it and it was taken out of her hands. But, I mean, there's Maddie Anderson on the bench on the left side rooting on and cheering for her teammate on the right, Mac Titus, because she's the one in goal right now, the one that's fit to play. And sometimes as a leader on a team, you can't take the field. And all you can do is be a great teammate, and, and that's what Anderson is doing here today. Find a way, right? Find a way to impact your teammates, and that's exactly what she is doing. You said, I, I, true, I until she got injured. She, she was doing great things at Mississippi State. At the time that you saw that point three goals against average, that was leaving the country. Right, and, and you know, this unfortunate injury has put her in the position that she's at right now, but it's given Mac Titus the opportunity to step up. I love that she's in the side of the field and she's encouraging her teammates. And again, that's what you want from a teammate, a good person that just, regardless of who's on the field, you want them to be successful. Beckman switches the point. Pante cuts it back in. Has a bit of room to operate. That space closed down by Juliet Moore. Kata holds up on sample. Looking for the run at Gongo. No support for the moment. And now here he comes. Johnson. And that's getting a little bit scrambled in the middle. Good ball out wide to McWhorter. Centered back in the middle. Gutierrez just had to hold off the run. Gongo is right there trying to put home the second. Okay, Colvin will take a seat. It's Georgia Lebb coming back in. Freshman team started five of the last six games. Didn't have any previously. Here's Matula. That space was closed down by Hannah Pimentel. Pimentel, another player that has not been pressed into too much duty this year. That it just seems like all the players off of the bench for Mississippi State, that the right decisions are being made by James Armstrong. They're rewarding him. Just looking at the last phase of play when Mississippi State possessed the ball. I would love to see James allowing her to get a little bit more forward. They win the ball over on the right hand on the left hand side, and she's she's sitting back in that back four. Now, don't get me wrong. She's maybe thinking, oh, we want to be defensive, we want to keep our shape, etc. But when all this space opens up in front of her, get out there. You know, ask questions of the Texas A&M back line by getting you as an outside back forward. And as you've seen, she's got the wheels, she's got the, she got the pace. I would love to see her just be a little bit more aggressive. Comb sends it forward. Chested down by Johnson. Alzado was there to send it clear. Only as far as Combs to restart. And another whistle. Offside. Flag went up. Yeah. And Carissa Beckman and Texas A&M find a goal. If they do not, it is the end of their SEC tournament. And they will patiently wait and see what happens with the NCAA tournament committee. Their final line would be 9, 10, and 5. 
though this would not hurt the RPI too much playing Mississippi State. Number 36 in the country on a neutral site. Let's go by for Delois. First and second half have been kind of similar, starting with Texas A&M in a flurry, and then really high pressure in both first, in both the first and second half from A&M, and you can see Mississippi State getting more and more and more into it. it. It's not sustainable, right? That high pressure is not sustainable, and when you are high pressing like that, G wants you need to find the back of the net. You need to get yourself back into the game, and the more and more it goes on, Mississippi State grow back into it. Now you're going to be looking for Mississippi State to go and possess, be in control of the game, and make good decisions from the bench to bring on players in positions that they know can go and hurt a &M. If it gets later and later and Texas A&M is still trailing, do you bring back that high pressure? Um, I think what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to change your formation. Like if you're if you're chasing the game late, you, you need to go and change. You know, definitely bring on another forward. Bring on another forward. Change. Go like you just. You could end up a three, even sometimes like a, a two back, right? Because again, you lose, you're out. You can you you you, ha you you have to go and get that equalizer, and you got to go and push to get the winner, and that's that that's that, that's difficult if you're going to hold a ba a back line that are so deep and. You're going to have definitely with a formation change. Both teams here in Pensacola playing for the right to face Alabama, the number one overall seed. For either of them, it is going to be a tall task, but both want the challenge. And delayed offside. Now they're going to call. I believe delayed offside there. I think he called the run of me a panta. Yeah, foul. Yeah, yep. right. That's yeah. what it was. It's in, it's interesting. So like James has made that change. He's brought over Hannah Pimentel over onto the. She's actually down on her knee right now. Hopefully she's not injured. But he's brought her over onto the left hand side um, to go and take care of of Mia Pante, known with the athleticism that she's going to hopefully prevent her from cutting in and getting the opportunity to rattle the back of the net. actually gone off the field right now well I hope that's not another game ending injury because she's been doing so well Taylor James getting ready to check back in Julia Moore sheds the pity they're going deeper and deeper into their bench. Mississippi State trying to hold off Texas A&M and get to the quarterfinal. Though, this is not going to be an easy final 22 minutes and change. Texas A&M not going to go quietly. Go back to the keys of the game. Mental focus and that discipline. You need that for 22 minutes right now. Can you focus on getting your, oh, there's a late one. Oh, that is really late on sample. No, uh, Makaya McDonald, yep. Now, now he, he, here's the thing. I'm looking for a card right now if I'm James Armstrong. I I am surprised we're not seeing one, right? honestly. Especially after the card that was pulled and the tackle early on in the first half, which I don't think was as bad as that one. There has to be that consistency piece. Agreed. So, just a foul for Makaya McDonald. Mother, out of danger. McDonald closes down that space so quickly. Combs ball over the top. Kenna Caldwell does what Kenna Caldwell needs to do. Sharp off our line, goes down brave, holds on to the ball. But great ball over the top from Mississippi State to run on to, gives him an opportunity. Hayes. Out wide. Pante. 
too heavy a touch and lost possession because of it. And now can Mississippi State break? Can't pick out that final pass. Gongo. Got a black and maroon around her. Texas A&M, who is unbeaten in their last seven matches on the ropes in Pensacola in the SEC tournament first round. McDougal. Right now on SEC Network Plus, if you're looking for Missouri Western State, in Kentucky, that is going on right now on the ESPN app. We will get you there here on the SEC Network once we are finished with our second game of the doubleheader here in the first round of the SEC tournament. It's Alex Perlman, Ian Carey, been with you all day. There's Olivia Buxton with a big ice pack on her left knee. A terrific freshman went down at the end of the first half. Not look like she is close to returning to this match, and we'll just have to wonder about the prognosis should Mississippi State advance. Fed the middle, found sample. Texas A&M center back. McDonald. Now Beckman. Lev trying to build for Texas A&M. Here's Colvin, trying to gain the byline and send a cross in. Did it last touch Mummer? Yes, it did. Corner kick, Texas A&M. And a bit of life offensively for the Aggies. A little bit of high pressure. Great ball played there wide down the line. And of course, you know, crisis defending. Gives away the corner. And Mississippi State need to be organized. Make sure that they're able to go clear the lines, not give away, not give away a free header and rely on Titus to pull off another wonder save. Is this the moment for Texas A&M? They have been stymied so far in front of goal by the sophomore Titus. The difference in this goal, Gwen Mummert's second of the season in the 38th minute with the goal to make it 1-0. Colvin. They were looking for Georgia Lebb at the top of the box. Flew over her. Now Sample plays it in herself. Met by Moore. Williams. Jai Smith. Deflected by Mummert. She's really putting a shift here today. She's been all, all over the field. All over, all over the field, uh, Alex. She's Again, really good, really good 1v1 defender, hard to beat. And again, dangerous on the other end of the field. You can see a lot of pressure now from Texas A&M. Can Mississippi State withhold it? And the question is, for Texas A&M, can Macy Matula and the Aggies keep it up for another 17 and a half minutes or so? Depending on if they can get the equalizer. The only time these two teams met in the regular season, this was the score line. Long effort right into Titus by Beckman. With the confidence that she has right now, you're not going to beat her from that distance with a shot like that. Now, can, can Mississippi State manage the clock? Sun setting in Pensacola, Florida. Spectacular sight. First year that the SEC soccer tournament has been here. 18 of them in Orange Beach to the 29 SEC soccer tournaments. And finally a whistle comes from referee Aaron Hernandez. Only two other cities have hosted multiple SEC tournaments, Auburn, Alabama, and Nashville, Tennessee. Both of them have hosted two. And Orange Beach, Alabama since 2005 and also in 2003 
was the host, Pensacola, filling the role not only admirably. It has been an excellent first day of action and first day that this pitch has ever been played on. We were talking about the weather right throughout tonight and look at this field right now. Perfect. And this is more or less the end of the second game plus the overtime that was on it. So coaches are going to be so happy and so pleased with the work that's been done on the surface. Here's a free kick coming up though for Texas A&M as Hayes wins it. Opportunity to whip a cross in and maybe get this equalizer as it gets later and later and the clock continues to tick down now under 16 minutes left in regulation. Sometimes I'd be shouting, I'd be shouting maybe three in a wall but so close to the corner of the 18 but you don't want to give numbers down and when you're picking up inside the 18 yard box. Colvin delivers. Long effort back into the mixer by Anderson Williams. And Titus collects very coolly. The Bulldogs just continue to make history this year. Their first 10 win season since 2001. It was only their fourth ever. After being unbeaten the first 14 games, they dropped four of their last six. We've talked at length about the injury issues, but they are just about 15 minutes away from getting a first round win. Probably cementing their spot in the NCAA tournament as well. Here's Katie Smith making the run out of the bat. Forward for Hayes. Mummer catches up to it. Stop, stop, stop. Stayed in. Hayes probably thought it was going to go out on Texas A&M if she didn't do just that. Looking for the head of Sample. Finds her for a moment. And now back out wide off of Matula. This is going to be a Mississippi State throw in coming. They have never won in the SEC tournament. Four tries. Coming up empty each time. And how fitting would it be for this Bulldogs team that has been ravaged by injury to get their first SEC tournament win in this season. It's huge of any of them. Absolutely not huge. And, and but but deserving. Like they have battled and battled and battled and if they're able to hold it for the next 13 odd minutes then it you know, puts them into a spot, and you're talking even postseason again into the, into the tournament, right? You're, 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 you're making it concrete, right? You're getting yourself into postseason, and again, Mississippi State, not a non-traditional powerhouse, have came up big from, for the most part this season. Yeah, new kid on the block versus a perennial SEC tournament champion. Oh, there you go, you've got a head coach, he's got 500 wins under his belt. Going, going, going against a, a head coach that's been in, been in post four seasons. So I, I, lo I love what James Armstrong has done and his staff. And as you said, this is a this is a group of players that believe they believe that they can they can be successful, that they, they can do special things. And credit credit what credit's due. Still time for the Aggies though. Beckman. Rolled through, but Hodge intercepted. She was there every step of the way, not fooled by the trickery. Hayes. Now Smith. And Macy Matula down for a moment. She finally gets up though for the Texas A&M Aggies with 12.20 left. Everyone past the midline for Texas A&M. Lebb. I, I don't like seeing James Armstrong's team sitting so deep. Because again, if you, you, you said it, look at A&M's back line right now, like they're the other side of the circle. And that's just gonna invite press after press after press, and you're gonna struggle to get out. So when you win the ball, all you're gonna do is just give it back to them. So you're looking for, hey, can we work a way to get the ball? Can we get into these spaces? Again, one ball over the top, and you've got somebody like Wadsworth on the field that can go and create some trouble. Can they do that? But they've got to find them. Texas A&M out shooting Mississippi State 7-0 here 
in this second half, but they still do not have the breakthrough. And 19 to seven overall. But again, they might not have any shots here in this second half, but all seven of them in the first half were on goal for the Bulldogs. And that's the difference. That's the difference. One ball in the back and in it. The Mississippi State are defending for their lives. Already Ole Miss took down LSU, eliminating Sean Hudson's Tigers in PKs. It was a scoreless draw after 110 minutes. And then Ashley Orcus came up as the SEC goalkeeper of the year that she is with two huge saves in PKs, including one at the end of regulation that certainly changed the game in its own right. They will face South Carolina and then Mississippi State and Texas A&M fighting for that final spot in the quarterfinals on Tuesday. Molly McDougal to get us back underway, trained with the U.S. under 20 women's national team. Pavat. the corner to find Gutierrez. And Smith wins the goal kick for Kenneth Caldwell and Texas A&M. Well, here's what we're playing for in the SEC Soccer Tournament. We saw South Carolina and Ole Miss. Uh, Gamecocks have been in here scouting that first matchup, and Arkansas and Vanderbilt will follow Alabama at Mississippi State. That could end up being the match of the quarterfinals. Yes, it's the 4-5. I mean, granted, when there's only one seed between the two, you probably expect it to be pretty tight. But it didn't happen this year. Vanderbilt got blown out at Arkansas. I would be very surprised if Darren Ambrose's team had the same result in terms of how wide a margin that was. Yeah, I don't see history repeating itself at all day. And usually Vandy gives Arkansas a really good battle. Very different styles, very, obviously. Very different styles. You've got Vanderbilt who want to get numbers forward. They want to build. Um, build, from, build from the back. You've got an Arkansas that, again, have do really well with the style of playing that long ball. Uh, I'm feeding Hodge Hill and her, her comrades uh, inside the 18 yard box. So it, uh, that's, another, that's going to be another good game to watch. Here's McDonald. She's had some close calls already. No one on the back post run. So eight and a half minutes to go. G's gone to a three back. He's got num numbers forward. He's thrown the kitchen sink at it, looking to get this equalizer. This is this is this is the last dash for Texas A&M. A G number ten on NCAA all-time wins list. Third active in Division One behind Anson Dorrance and Jerry Smith. Smith of Santa Clara, one behind San Diego's Brian McManus. To get to number nine. Does it come today? That's what we're going to decide in the last eight minutes. Double team comes on Smith. Good defensive battle there by Deloise. Cleared Smith. Sample. And Mississippi State starting to pack the numbers behind the ball. Pretty much everybody dropping back now. Clog that middle, make sure nothing easy for Texas A&M. Sample. And you're, you're happy if the ball is dropped back every single time to the center back and then you're putting pressure on them. You can't let them drive though. Smith flips it through. The Donald just at Titus once again. So you can't let them drive at you and get those opportunities. It's great getting numbers in behind the ball, but allowing those numbers then to go and break and create space for a center back to go and drive, that's not what you want. And again, you're relying, you have to go and rely on, 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 on Titus to come up, come up big and make the saves. Just got through Quinn Mummard and Jai Smith, forcing the seventh save of the match for Mississippi State. Eighth, check that as she gets one more. Six for Caldwell so far. And now just six and a half minutes remaining. 
Cam Mississippi State see it out. Mac Titus already with a career high in terms of saves in a match. They go to the corner flag. Trying to waste down those precious seconds for Texas A&M's offense to get the equalizer. Hayes has not been able to make her usual impact. Number eight in black for Texas A&M. Remember the first team, all SEC. And Olivia Simpson checks in, wearing her usual number 23, instead number 35 for Simpson. And then this, this is smart, this is a smart move because you've got Hayes who's, who's creating a lot of problems for Mississippi State and putting their most at Hannah Pimitel putting their most athletic player on her, hopefully is going to shut her down for the last five and a half minutes. You can see 35 in white, actually Olivia Simpson, who usually wears number 23, were alerted to the change in jersey number. Long ball to the back post, and Matula can't track it down, and with five minutes to go now, some more time off of the clock on the Mac Titus goal kick. Entering the game for Mississippi State, number 26, Dojo Dongo, replacing number seven, Alexis Gutierrez. So right now, if you're Mississippi State and you're able to go and get possession with that three back, you've got to find those two areas left and right and let your players just spin off into those pockets of space. Yo. Know, you could put yourself in on goal to get your second, or get yourself to the corner flag and just waste as much time as you can. Deep throwing now coming from Matula in Texas A&M. Seconds winding down on their season. Hayes gains the box, deflected by Combs, cuts it back, took a deflection, Jai Smith. Back to the middle, equalized by Texas A&M, and we got a brand new ball game. The disappointing piece of that is that Mississippi State had two or three opportunities to clear the ball, and the amount of pressure that they've been put under and absorbed that pressure, and now all of a sudden the ball ends up in the back of the net, 1-1. One, one. But as you said, it's game on, it's game on. Mia Pente's third goal of the season. Just never got it clear. You see, they've had multiple opportunities to get the ball clear, and then eventually, eventually, Titus gets beaten. You can see that, you know, James Armstrong, James Armstrong, and his players are looking for, hey, can you go back and have a replay? Can we have a look at the foul? Was it a foul? I'd be disappointed too, to be fair. So in the 86th minute, Mia Pante ties it at one. And now you with 4.02 left, we may be heading for our second overtime game. Of yeah, the you gotta, yeah, you, 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 you got to rally the troops. You want to see it. What, what are a and going to do? Are they going to stay in the air? Look, they're staying in the three back right now because they're, hey, let's get numbers forward and let's go and get the winner. Yeah, they're hunting the winner right now, no doubt. Guy Smith picked up her third assist of the year. On the goal by Pante. They do a video review, but you can't go back and look at that only if the foul occurred outside and inside of the box. Very clearly, it would have been inside the box. So we are limited in that scope. Riley Combs with three and a half minutes left to send it forward for Mississippi State. Now both sides have to make sure that they are stout defensively. Don't give up a disappointment, which would be an absolute heartbreaker here late. Delois. Three minutes to go. Mississippi State still moving, moving the ball really well, but taking too many touches when they get themselves into good opportunities to serve the ball. Needs to be more, needs to be quicker, needs to be more clinical, and just hey, get it in, put numbers in, try and force something. Like again, is it two, two, two minutes, forty odd seconds? Why not? 
Everyone forward but Combs at this moment. And finally, Texas A&M making that shot advantage in the second half hold up a dozen to none right now for the Bulldogs. So if we do go to overtime, there is no more golden goal this year. It is two 10-minute periods in full. And if we do not get a winner, we are going to PKs for the second time today. It would be absolutely incredible if two years in a row, every first round game went to a PK. And the team waiting in the wings, the play are wanting that. Oh, you yeah. know that, you know that. You know, fresher legs, double period of overtime. It's tough, it's tough. But again, as you said, adrenaline pulls you through these games and Mississippi State will try everything that they've got in the locker to try and get this winner before, before the end of the period. Yellow kick was issued, looked like to Carissa Beckman. For Texas A&M. Deloise. Wadsworth. And she touched it out herself. And that is exactly what it is. Goal kick, Texas A&M. Minute and a half remaining in regular time. Lights have taken full effect. Sun has set here in Pensacola, and it has turned into a beautiful evening for soccer. Just clear the lines there for Mumbert, but it is enough to give Texas A&M a deep throw in with a minute to go. It's interesting, I never would have said that Texas A&M would become a long ball team. And that's what they're doing, they're trying to turn Mississippi State's back line because they have some athleticism and trying to get that winner. Long range, right into Titus. No tester there with 40 seconds remaining. Titus will boot it, try to boot it deep. Instead, it goes pretty short out towards the near sideline. Cleared by Pavat. Under 30 left. Williams. Played up to Pante, the goal scorer. Here's McDonald. Little give and go over the top. Caught in defense. Earned a corner kick. Do they even have time to send the corner kick in? Pante's just going to try to get it to the flag. And she is not going to be able to get the kick off. And we go to overtime for the second instance today. Tied at one, Texas A&M and Mississippi State. It's been interesting. It's been um, second half, box to the wall. Keep it nice yeah, and tidy. The biggest question, do you keep the three back? I think so. I think so because if I'm G, I, I believe I've got Mississippi State on the rails. And we're causing them so many problems. And you see, he stayed, he stayed with his three back. He'll have his two sitting in front. And he's got his two wide players getting forward. And when need be, they'll come back and defend. And so back underway. As Sample clears it past Wadsworth. So we start with 10 minutes on the clock here in overtime number one. Wadsworth. I believe the run would have been off anyway. That's why it was held up. And Caldwell can get us back with a 1-1 score after 90 minutes. Gwen Mummert in the 38th for Mississippi State and then Mia Pante equalized in the 86th. Not quite at the death, but very, very close. And I would imagine that James in some way was starting to think about the matchup with Alabama. And that is... Not what has happened so far. McDonald right to Titus. I'm not sure if she knew there was no run coming from Texas A&M. <laughs> yeah, she didn't get her looks. She didn't get any communication from her defenders. And that was definitely a save for uh, the scrapbook if someone's taking a picture of it, right? So, But she held it. She held on well. And Mississippi State are in possession. They can try, they can try and get after Texas A&M. That's when you put on the team Twitter. 
Aston Brosnahan Park, the site of the 2022 SEC Soccer Tournament with former Kentucky head coach Ian Carey. I'm Alex Perlman. Glad to join you here on a long Sunday of soccer. It has turned out to be that way. Gone past the 90-minute mark in both matches so far with the winner advancing to take on Alabama. So now whoever comes out of this is going to have to play the Crimson Tide. Both teams have in some ways been ravaged by injuries. Olivia Buxton went down for Mississippi State at the end of the first half. So that's another thing you have to add to the laundry list of issues that James Armstrong has had to deal with. But G. Guerrero has had to do a similar type of thing. It's hard to play the Crimson Tide at full strength. And then you're gonna play two overtime periods, potentially go through the mental anguish of PKs. Late tackle coming in. And Aaron Hernandez has the yellow card out. Gutierrez is going in the book. Yeah, when, when, when you when you see this, she comes she comes in late. She comes in late, you know. But again, hands up straight off the bat. Not purposeful. There was no malice in it. There was absolutely no malice in it. And if it was, it, it's deserving of a card. And hopefully Katie Smith is okay. But going back to these benches and going back to these two teams and injuries, etc. And they, whoever wins goes to play Alabama. And Wes Hart will credit the depth of his bench. And hopefully we're not putting a curse on this, but the, the, how healthy they are with the depth of his bench. He, he will always contribute that to the success that they're having this year. And that's massive. Absolutely massive. And that's what he's looking for to continue past the SEC tournament into a long run in the NCAAs. You cannot have the year that West Hart and Alabama have had without honestly getting some breaks. And the fact that they've stayed so healthy, that qualifies as a break. I mean, <laughs> yeah. look at what Texas A&M and Mississippi State are going through right yeah, now. Yeah, and uh, I, I keep saying, I've been there. It, 2017, 2018 were horrible years at Kentucky because we were ravaged with injuries. Like every other game, you're minus this player and that player. And it's, it, we went through a th we went through three game period that we had a field player in goal. And you just can't survive. You can't survive with that. But At the SEC level. Too. Right, but unfortunately, that's what you inherit. And that's what you got to deal with. Here's Gutierrez, who just picked up the yellow card. Battling with Carolyn Calzada. Going to stay with Mississippi State here. Just under seven minutes to go in the first overtime. The near post. Miley. Miley Hayes. Hayes can fly as she gets past her defender. McDonald along with her. Hayes takes it herself. Just over the crossbar going coast to coast. The all SEC first teamer almost gave Texas A&M the lead by herself. If that went into, back, into the back of the net, that's goal of the year perhaps. Just for where she picked it up. The defender unfortunately allowed her to turn, was a little bit too far off. And she, she just ran and ran and ran. I think Gwen Merritt, she needs to step there. She's getting a little bit closer. But put her onto her left foot. And fortunately for Mississippi State, it was over the crossbar. Did close down the angle, but Hayes is clearly frustrated. No, she could have done a little bit better. That was our moment. After that terrific yep, that, individual that, that was our moment. Texas A&M right back at it. And earns the corner. What a vein of form that she is in right now, Miley Hayes. Winning the FCC Offensive Player of the Week three of the last four weeks. Just in the last six games alone, seven goals. Yeah, I'm hitting, hitting form at the right time going into tournament. G is going to be licking his lips watching this because that's your, your forward is banging in goals for fun. That's what you're looking for. In swinger. Chested down by Hodge. And sent out of danger. A little more than midway through the first overtime of two. 
as he goes back to the drawing board. A right. lot of experience there, getting his 500th career win, just the fifth Division I head coach to do so in their regular season win over Florida at the end of the year. I'd love to see what he's writing down. Just like, and again, seeing it, does it come off on the field? Like, is he going to make a substitution? Bring on somebody with that pace. Is he going to look for, hey, get yourselves, get a corner, and this is the set piece that we're going to take. Macy Matula, dangerous ball into the middle. It went in front of the run of Micaiah McDonald. Split the double team to McDonald! Just wide. Another great effort for Texas A&M, and the goal is building. You feel it coming right now for the Aggies. We're taking a deep breath in here. You know, the, the amount of pressure that A&M are putting them under, and you can see, like, she gets through two players way too easily. You've got, you've, you're a 2v1 situation. You cannot let her get through there, and McDonald's not picked up and just passed the post. Caldwell gives it right back to Mississippi State. McWhorter dispossessed. Beckman. Now Matula. Switch the play to sample. We're going to build through the lines on the far sideline. Back it goes to her from Pante, the goal scorer in the 86th minute. McDonald's getting some space now. McDonald. This is more like the Texas A&M that we're, we're used to seeing traditionally. Great pace, great possession, knocking the ball around well, getting to the end line, serving. Just missing that little clinical piece at the end to put the ball in the back of the net. Figueroa, it will be very disappointed if Texas A&M doesn't come away with a win, especially dominating the end of this match so much. 27 shots, 10 on goal, and eight total shots for Mississippi State. They have been peppering Matt Titus. Hodge. Not generally her forte, usually service is. Wanted to do better with that one. Three substitutions now coming in. There's Hannah Johnson and Juliet Moore. And Deloise takes a seat. So this is Taylor James for Mississippi State with a minute 40 to go before the second overtime begins. It just shows, it just shows you how James has had to go with his bench. So he's bringing on Taylor James before before this tournament. She'd only played 47 minutes all year. Just 60 seconds left now in the first overtime. Simpson. Colvin clears it just as far as Beckman. And now play back into the mixer. That's a dangerous ball. Chested down by Wadsworth. And sent in for Mississippi State. Jojo Gungo, the hero for the Bulldogs. At the very end of the first overtime, not the game winner, but surely puts them with a huge advantage to try to get to the quarters. It just showed one ball over the top caught Texas A&M. Again, numbers down because he kept it as a three bag. But that one ball over the top, they don't deal with it. We thought it's over. Wadsworth takes a touch. You're thinking, why aren't you hitting it first time? But she plays an unbelievable ball across. And, oh, clinical finish in between two Texas A&M defenders. Right over Carlina's sample. What a ball by Wadsworth. What a finish by Gongo. Her first goal of his season, 13th of her career. Before that, all of them were at UTEP, where she transferred in from, and maybe a Starkville hero 
on a Sunday night in Pensacola. It's it's interesting, right? Because we've said it, A and M have been all over Mississippi State in this period of overtime, and then Mississippi State go up and put themselves two one up, completely against the run against of play. Against the run of play, and I can tell you, G's going to be oh. It's going to be eating them alive. It's going to be absolutely eating them alive. And, you know, he, he can't wait probably for these 30 seconds to run out so he can get stuck into his team and have some harsh words about that defending. That, that's, that's not good. That is not good. Um, but, again, ladies and Mississippi State, they've, they've kept in it and in it and in it. They've a goalkeeper that kept them in the game. And <laughs> they're, 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 they're up 2-1 right now. But you've got to take your opportunities in front of goal. You've got to take, when they present themselves, take those opportunities. Final seconds for Texas A&M. Mia Pante bobbing down at the edge of the box. And so we will go to the second overtime with mid for the opposite team go away very quickly. And Texas A&M still has 10 minutes on the clock to try to get an equalizer, maybe even a winner. Equalizer would send us to PKs, but we are not there yet as Mississippi State tries to hold on for its life shorthanded against a perennial power in the Aggies. And now he's had to stay as a three back because he's got to get the numbers forward to go and get the equalizer. And that leaves them suspect for that one ball over the top and, and Mississippi State are in again. Would you at the start of overtime have dropped back and in, into a four back like he was playing in the 4-4-2 to start? Or are you okay with the three back? The with offensive formation. I would have, I, I would probably, with the quality I've got on the field and the pressure that I'm putting Mississippi State under, stayed, I would have stayed in the three back. Because the momentum was with us, and then all of a sudden you absorb, you absorb, you absorb, and then one ball, but you need, in that three back you need to be disciplined. You need to be really, really disciplined. And all it took was one opportunity for Wadsworth to get out wide and create, create space because defenders will go to her and suck him over and she plays that wonderful ball into the box and the ball ends up in the back of the net. Again, if you're looking for Missouri Western and Kentucky, the exhibition basketball match here on SEC Network, that's going on right now on SEC Network Plus in the ESPN app and we will get you there to Rupp Arena when we are finished in Pensacola. Still 10 minutes remaining, now eight and a half for Texas A&M, potentially left in their season. Here's Hannah Johnson trying to make it no doubt that Mississippi State is moving on to face SEC West Division foe Alabama. Flag went up on the run. That's interesting. When the ball, when the ball got played wide, she, she had the possibility to go 1v1 at the center back. And you're looking for her to go 1v1, but there's eight minutes to go. And her thought, her first thoughts went to, oh, let's just go negative. Let's try and hold on to the ball. And against an A&M side, I don't think that's probably the best decision to have made. Colvin. Now Pante. Giving up. That's very well defended. Pante wants to get onto her left foot and try and create. Now all of a sudden when she cuts onto her left foot, double teamed, win the ball, and all of a sudden Mississippi State break out. And then you can see it, Mississippi State get that ball and they're trying to find that little bit of space in that three back. Unfortunately, that hit a little bit. Again, technically let her down and it goes out for a throw in for a &M. And for Texas A&M, you are seeing some major minutes being played for a lot of these attacking players. Kate Colvin with 95. Mia Pante, 95-90 for Miley Hayes. Coming off of a, a game on Thursday. A lot of minutes and legs. And again, if you're the play, if you're the team that's sitting like Alabama to get to play the winner of this, you're you're going great. This is this this, this is great. If this again, again if this goes to PKs, they're not an equalizer and PKs, they've been on this field for a long, long, long period of time. Colvin just sends it back towards the middle of the pitch. Six and a half minutes remaining. Mississippi State looking to move on to face Alabama in the quarterfinals on Tuesday night. Went out just by the corner flag though over the touchline. So just a throw in for the Aggies. We're hoping that this is not the end 
of their postseason run. Both of these teams here at the beach want to wake up and see the Gulf of Mexico. Only one of them will for the next few days. I think a pretty good incentive too. Oh, yeah. I would love to stay here longer than the time that we're going to be here, right? <laughs> but you know, look, looking at a and M, have to look at Hayes. Hayes to me is somebody that can change and turn this game. She still has so much energy. You see her there. She gets on the ball. She's willing to drive up people. They need to get her, get her on the ball. They need to let her be creative. She, they need to let her when she gets on the ball drag players to her to go and allow somebody else to break in behind that Mississippi State line. She's somebody I think can, can unlock that Mississippi State defense. Hayes number eight in black. The reigning SEC Offensive Player of the Week has gotten it three of the last four coming off of a brace and an assist in their win over Florida. The Bulldogs trying to knock off Texas A&M for the first time in eight games for the Aggies. Seven straight unbeaten. Hodge going up and winning a ball in the air. Less than five minutes to go. The last thing either team wants is PKs. Well, certainly Texas A&M more so than Mississippi State. They might even sign up for it at this point, but unpredictable. Wadsworth just flashes it forward over by the touchline and maybe kept in by Texas A&M, just barely. You can hear Kenna call urging her team, get forward, get forward, get forward. You go back, you mentioned in, in, in the beginning that the clinical possession that A&M needs to have, they need it more now than ever. You cannot turn balls over when you're trying to play through midfield to get that equalizer because Mississippi State will catch you on, on the counterattack because your number's down at the back. Hayes had some room for Jai Smith as well if she would have just flicked it forward but took it herself well wide. Wondering maybe if that was the right decision when it's all said and done. Here's Santa Tellish to score the goal score we have to spell the goal score jojo gongo she'll get some much deserved high fives over on the bench yeah much deserved love for that finish that's the winning goal she'll be she, she will and our staff will be very very happy going back to the hotel here's hodge blowing by a few texas a&m defenders tellish hoping it goes out of bounds it does not And now McDonald, throwing coming for Texas A&M. 3-20 left in overtime number two. After this match is complete, we will know every team in the quarterfinals on Tuesday right here at Pensacola. I like that, my goalkeeper. Drop back, don't pick up the ball. Let the, let the pressure come to you. And bring yourself up to the top of the league and that box and do what you did. Every second is precious once we hit triple zeros. That's the end of the game, no stoppage time. No referee looking at his watch, deeming when should I blow the final whistle. This is an absolute battle right now. Who wants it more? Long range effort, nowhere close. Kind of a waste there. Yeah, the, the, she needs to get closer to the goal or she needs to try and combine. It's like an a and no, know how to. It's, it's just desperation. It's desperation shooting from that distance and not getting any power on it. And you know it's going to drive wide and the goalkeeper's got time to waste time. And if this score holds up, it's going to be two years in a row that Texas A&M does not get a win in the SEC tournament. Went through Titus's hands, but no issues with Mummert right there to clean it up. 
90 seconds to go. Desperation time for G. Guerreri and the Aggies. Almost celebration coming for Matt Titus. Potentially the end of the season. Well, we'll see what the committee says. Johnson just toying with the Texas A&M defense with only 60 seconds remaining. Sample to Colvin. Has acres of space in front of her. Jai Smith turns on Mummer. And a whistle. Free kick now coming up here for Texas A&M. Is Jai Smith going to take it quickly or is she going to boot it deep? Everybody's going forward, including Kenneth Caldwell now to take the free kick. Caldwell sends it towards Titus. And well, she man. wrestles it out well, of the air. Well. There's this. There you go. Like, this, this young lady has just grown and grown in confidence throughout this game. To come out in traffic and claim that, you've just, you've, you've basically just won the game for your team. Yep. That is huge. That pretty that's much did right there. That, that's the, that's, that, she's won the game for Mississippi State. In less than 10 seconds now, the Bulldogs can feel it. A last ditch effort for Texas a and and Time to celebrate for the Bulldogs. They're moving on to the quarterfinal to take on top seeded Alabama. History for Mississippi State in Pensacola. So happy for James Armstrong, but 